debouncing. What kind of name is that in the first place? Are you taking a ball and debouncing it off the wall? Honestly, when I first heard the name, I was super confused by it. But now that I actually understand it, it starts to make a lot more sense on what it actually means and how it can be applied. Not to mention, it's also one of the most frequently asked questions for a front end interviews. And in this video, I will be explaining exactly what is debouncing, what are some common use cases for debouncing, and how you can implement debouncing yourself. I'll also be covering some unique edge cases that are generally asked in front end engineering interview questions. So watch until the very end to see all these edge cases in action. Hi everyone, super glad to have you guys here. My name is Shivam and I make content that's in relation to health, personal finance, software engineering, and technology. So if you like any of those subjects, consider subscribing below and pressing the like button on this video. With that being said, let's get started. First of all, what is even debouncing? Debouncing is nothing more than just limiting the rate of when a function is executed or called. Now this function is generally going to be more of an expensive function and when I mean expensive function I mean it's doing some sort of heavy calculation or it could be hitting your network and you want to maybe delay how often your network is being hit or called so that it doesn't have an overload on your network and also when you return data you're not over processing data more than it actually needs to be processed. So there's two ways to limit the rate of a function being executed or called. One is called debouncing and the other is called throttling. So here is an example of debouncing in action. So if you see on the left, it says move your mouse here. And as I move my mouse, you can see that over here on the right side, debouncing is called only when I start moving my mouse or when I end moving my mouse. So let's take a look at it one more time. And you can compare it to the regular on the top, which should happen every single time my mouse is moved one pixel. So as I'm moving it here, Regular is being called, but as soon as I stop, it's called one more time. Let's try this again. So, like I mentioned, your debouncing will restrict how often your function is called. It'll either call it in the beginning or it can call it at the end. Um, and in comparison, throttling, which is at the bottom, and I'll be creating a separate video of how throttling works. You know, one of the biggest struggles that I've had when I've been studying for front-end engineering interviews, finding actual real-world questions that are asked by a lot of top tech companies like Meta, Netflix, Apple, Google, and so forth. What I've gone ahead and done is I've taken about 50 to 60 most frequently asked questions by top tech companies and also system design questions, about 10, 20 of those, and put them into one, one centralized curriculum. It's called frontendlead.com. If you want to try it out, press the link in the video description below. Now let's take a look at an example. We'll implement debouncing ourselves. So here I've created a simple input text field with a on key up event that's calling this expensive function. This expensive function is nothing more than uh, console dot logging some text call set that's saying I am called count times count is just a uh, integer that's getting, getting incremented every time expensive function is being called and all of this is sort of wrapped inside of a set timeout which is being called every 500 milliseconds so if you notice if I type really quickly here let's see what happens so even though I stopped typing my expensive function was still executing on every key up event as soon as I press up for my key the function is called and then executed and this Call, I got called 26 times because I entered 26 letters. Now, this might be okay if you are just doing something simple on the client, but this could be a problem if you are calling an API to get your auto suggestion list back or so forth. So you don't want to overload the server. So it's best to just call your function either in the beginning or at the end of when you're done typing. So let's implement debouncing from scratch here. So I'm going to rerun this so we have a fresh start here. So now instead of calling an expensive function, let's call debounced function instead. And so let's define that. So const debounced function is debounce. And then the first argument is going to be the function that you'd like to debounce. So in our case, it's just our expensive function. And then the second argument is going to be the delay between calls. So we can start off with a 200 milliseconds. So let's build a debounce function now. So we'll say function debounce, which again, the first 
argument is the function that you want to eventually call. So let's just call it callback. And the second argument is the delay that we want to pass in. And then the first thing we want to keep track of is a timer. Let timer. And we can just not get a value or you can say null, that's fine. And then this will return a function. And we'll grab the arguments that are getting get passed from the function itself. And then finally, we want to say timer equals to a set timeout. Uh, and then for the set timeout, the second argument, we can just pass in the delay that came in. And here we simply just, say, just call our callback. So callback. But we, instead of just calling it immediately, we want to use we want to preserve the this context of your initial uh, callback function and also preserve the arguments. So we can use the call or apply method here. So I'll say callback .call this. This will preserve the this context, and then we'll just pass in all the arguments as well. And then the last thing here we want to do is we just also want to clear out the timer. So if you say if timer exists, simply clear out timer, clear timeout. And that should be plenty. That should be good enough for us to run this. So let's try executing this. Let's clear the console. So now what should happen is initially as I start typing, nothing should be called. But when I stop typing, uh, we should see our expensive function run. So typed a few words and it called zero times. Now let's try this again, but I'm going to try typing a little bit slower and let's see what happens. As you can see, I definitely typed more than nine times, but the function was called after every 200 millisecond interval. And it sort of combined a few values and called them together. That's kind of what we wanted to do here. But one problem here and one uh, common edge case here that are going to be asked by uh, interview questions is, what if I want to be able to call my function immediately so the first keystroke should also call the API. So for instance, right now, if I type really fast, the first keystroke does not call anything, right? Only the last event calls it. So let's type. We'll only call our function at the very end. So how would we implement that? Well, let's add another argument to here called immediate, which is going to be a Boolean. By default, let's set that to false. and. In this case now, let's say immediate will be true in our debounce function. And um, now what we want to say is if, if somehow immediate is true, let's call our callback right away. But only if it's the first instance of our debounce being called. Subsequent instances should not be applied. So how does that work? So we can't simply just say if immediate is true then copy and paste this here then simply just call our callback we really can't do this because like i mentioned before um, immediate will be always true we don't know if this is the first instance of it being called so let's define a variable called let uh, first call immediate right maybe there's a better word we should just maybe call it should call immediately or something but that's fine um, now, how, how do we check if this is the first time it's being called? Well, the first time, timer is always going to be nil or null, right? So we'll say as long as timer is null or not defined and immediate oops, is equal to true, and we can use a strict operator here if we want. If first call immediate is true, then we call all of our arguments. And if if we want to call um, if tr if immediate is, is is true, then we don't actually want to do anything in our set timeout. We want to just falsify this. So if we say as long as immediate is false, only then call our callback. And just to be safe, we can always set our timer to null. So we know that every time this is executed, timer will be null. So let's try rerunning this again. Let's clear the console. So now. The first keystroke, we should get our API being called right away. And then we also get it called at the very end. And that's pretty much it. You just learned how to implement debouncing in JavaScript.
If you enjoyed this content, please consider pressing the like button below and subscribing. I'll be producing a lot more content like this in the near future. And with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you.